Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, also known as ETCG1 on this here channel. We're in the hat. Here on ETCG1, we talk about stuff. We aren't doing repair videos. If you want repair videos, link in the description to the Eric the Car Guy channel. You can go there and watch all the repair videos you like, but please don't go into the comments and complain about this not being a repair video because that just makes you look foolish. And hey, if it's your birthday, happy birthday. Today's topic has come about as a result of some of the comments that some of you have made to the uh, Porsche 918 interview that I did recently with Andrew and Elizabeth. Uh, for those of you not familiar, I'll post, post the link in the description to that video, but basically it's about the Porsche 918, which is one of the latest in the next generation of supercars, let's call them. Uh, I believe Ferrari, McLaren, and Porsche, and probably some others that I'm not familiar with are all putting out these hybrid type supercars, which use electric power and gas power. And the Porsche, at least to me, represents one of those engineering feats uh, that we've been able to, to pull off, and I just think it's amazing thing is, it comes with, uh, the one in the video in particular, come, came with a $1.1 million price tag. Yes, that's $1.1 million for a car. So the technology does come at a price. Now, uh, that one, I think the base price is somewhere just south of a million dollars, but uh, because they had a, an upgrade package to that car, that's, that's what bumped it up above the million dollar mark. And the surprising thing is, is it doesn't even have air conditioning. Yes, only hardcore people may enter here. That said, who can buy a $1.1 million car? Well, obviously rich people. And when we say rich, well, we mean monetarily rich. And the reason why I'm making this video is because I've had a lot of experience with wealthy people in my life. Uh, being an automotive technician in a luxury car line, I've run into a few of them. I've also kind of sought out people of wealth and of, uh, let's just say, an entrepreneurial spirit in my life, and I've sought inspiration from them. I've been fortunate enough to meet people and be able to sit down with them, talk to them, find out you know, how they got to where they were and the things that they did. And in the case of the uh, Porsche owners, both uh, Andrew and Elizabeth, getting to know them a little bit better. And the, the, the topic of this video is basically rich people. I'm not saying what it's like to be rich, but I'm just trying to change your perspective a little bit because there were, there were some negative comments there. And I think those comments stem from being jealous of not being rich yourself. I can understand that, I can relate. I've, well, let's put it this way. There was a time in my life where if not for the kindness of strangers, I would have just as easily been out on the street. But I've worked for everything I've had and uh, everything I have, and I, I appreciate it. And I think the impression is, is that some people of wealth don't appreciate the things that they have because they're wealthy. And I would like to, at least from my experience, sort of do away with that stereotype. I'm not saying all rich people are good, nice people because that's not the case. Some of them, well, let's face it, they're just flat out dicks. But especially in the case of Andrew and Elizabeth, they're not like that. And the impression that I got from them was they were very appreciative of what they had and, and what they were able to do with their wealth and they were enjoying it. And I don't think we should fault them for that. Yeah, there's a lot of talk right now about the one percenters and all those kinds of things. Well, you know what? I am evidence that it is possible to bring yourself up out of where you are. With enough hard work and the right idea, and you say, well, I've got this disadvantage, I've got that disadvantage, and I, I'm not able to get to that level. I'm telling you right now that that's what's holding you back. What's holding you back is the belief that you're not worthy, that you're not capable. If you really want it, you, you go for it, and you do whatever you can to make something happen. That's what I did in the case of Eric the Car Guy, and I'm glad I did. And I've put a tremendous amount of effort into my business and Eric the Car Guy, and I don't regret it one bit. I've, I've actually seen it come together. And a lot of it starts with a good idea. If you've got a good idea and you pursue it and you move it, and hopefully it hits for you. But I don't think we should fault the people of wealth. Now, as I alluded to earlier, not all people of wealth are, I don't really want to call it decent people. It's hard to put labels. Uh, on, on things like that, but actually it's uh, getting close to Christmas time, so we'll say the Ebenezer Scrooge rich people of the world, uh, who are really just in it for the wealth and are in pursuit of wealth, and that's what defines them. Okay, there are those people, but they're not all like that, and that's, that's what I'm trying to put out here. It's, it's, as I said, I was reading through some of those comments and I'm thinking to myself, well, okay, I get it. I get that you're not wealthy. I get that you don't 
have the means to, to do things. And, and I believe me, I know what it's like not to have the means to pay your bills. I know what it's like to get your Thanksgiving dinner from the Girl Scouts. I understand that. But what I'm saying is you can't fault the people that have. Just because you don't have doesn't mean that the people that have are at fault. Also, here's something else. Even when I didn't have a darn thing in my life, materialistically, uh, not, not two pennies to rub together, any of that stuff, I always had really good friends. And I always had my family to rely on. And trust me, that's where true wealth lies. More so than you think, and your health. That's the other thing. If you've got your health, you got friends, Sometimes family can let you down, sometimes friends can let you down, sure, but, but those things go a really long way. Don't put your self-worth into your bank statement, because that's not how it works. It's really all up here. And if you decide you want to be wealthy, if you decide you want to pursue bigger things in your life, no one's going to hold you back. Only you are going to hold you back. Consider that. Instead of, instead of looking at people of wealth and saying, hey, you know, you've got something I don't, therefore I'm going to resent you, look at it as a life goal if wealth is what you're seeking in life. Personally, I could take it or leave it. I mean, I, I'm in a spot now, you know, just with this, with Air at the Car Guide, where I'm completely happy. If I can pull this off for the rest of my life, I'm going to keep doing this. I would rather do this than anything else. And even if I never made any more than I make now, I would be completely happy. I have everything I need and then some. And I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm really cool with that. Shoot, I got three cars sitting behind me. <laughs> I mean, I can come in here and kind of take my pick. And that's, that's a privilege that I, I enjoy. I enjoy, I worked for it and I'm happy to have it. But once again, it's all about perception. It's all about how you, how you take it in, how you, how you perceive it, how you choose to, to look at it. And if you choose to be resentful, well, that's your choice. But I'm gonna say that's gonna be counterproductive because you might just miss out on making a good friend. Who knows? But yes, there are uber wealthy people out there, as I've mentioned, that are just pitiful human beings. But I don't think the wealth has anything to do with that. I think a pitiful human being without money or with money is still a pitiful human being, no matter how you look at it. Anyway, let's put this back to the group. Wealthy people, what are your experiences with them? Have you worked for them? Have you known them? Uh, and are they good people, bad people? Once again, this is all about perception and conjecture, but I just wanted to put this discussion out there. Comments are always welcome. There will also be a link in the description to a discussion about this video. If you have automotive questions, I would ask that you head over to airatthecarguide.com. Welcome video there to tell you about the stuff to help you at airatthecarguide.com. If you wish to connect with me socially, I can be found on Google+, Facebook, Twitter, and now Instagram. And I close each of my videos with be safe, have fun, stay dirty. I'll see you next time. Take it easy.